Assalamualaikum class. So today we'll be going into chapter 8 which will be on hardware. As we all know, a computer system is made up of two parts which are hardware and also software. So we'll be going into these two things today. Alright, so first of all, um, the question I want to ask here is what are the two most significant platforms for producing and delivering multimedia projects? In this case, the word platform that I'm talking about here is also known as an operating system so what operating system or what platform are you using um, when you're producing your project so the two most significant one that people usually use are of course windows and also macintosh so depending on what you prefer okay the two most um, significant or two most um, popular platform that are usually used by users all around the world would be windows and macintosh all right so um other than windows and mac os there are other uh, platforms that you can use okay you have things like um, irix you have solaris you have linux okay all those um operating system system can also be used to create your uh, multimedia projects but the two most significant ones that people usually use are windows and mac okay all right, so um, like I've mentioned earlier, the most commonly used platform for the development and delivery of today's multimedia are Windows and Macintosh. The reason why these two are the most commonly used platform is because um, they provide affordability, okay? Meaning that you can easily get them, all right, at a cheaper price in comparison to other operating system, which can be hard to get by. That's why it's a lot cheaper and it's a lot more affordable to be using Windows or Macintosh. All right. Also, uh, because of software and hardware availability as well as worldwide availability, uh, meaning that these two operating system can easily be used on any particular hardware that you have. Okay, and also it is available worldwide depending on where you are. Windows and Macintosh will always be available for you, okay? Alright, so let's go into uh, these two terms which we have cross-platform and platform independent, alright? Cross-platform cross refers to the capability of the multimedia project to run on different platforms whereby platform independent means that your multimedia project can work on any platform. Now, when we talk about cross-platform and platform independent, these two terms um, has a slight difference to them, alright? Cross-platform, it means that whenever we create a multimedia project, we need to uh, specify our target environment let's say um let's say i create a game okay so is it a mobile game or is it a um, computer game all right so depending on the hardware that you use and the operating system that you use okay you need to specify your target environment let's say i want to create a um a computer game okay for example the sims all right or um PUBG or any any games of that sort okay so um, let's say I create I, I want to create that game and I target it on Windows so I will make sure that my game can run on Windows and um, if I say that my game is cross-platform across Windows and Macintosh meaning that my game or my software need to be able to run on those platform so this is what i mean by cross platform you need to be able to run on different platform according to what you specify and the capability of your project okay so the next thing we have is platform independent platform independent means that your multimedia project can work on any particular platform meaning that let's say if my project or my game is platform independent meaning that it can be run on all platform everything okay it can run on windows it can run on macintosh you can run on linux or any operating system that you may find okay that's what it means by platform independent okay all right so depending on what you prefer all right you can always choose the type of platform that you want okay this all comes down to your personal preference whether you prefer to use windows or you prefer to use mac it depends on your budget constraint so if you feel like um windows is a lot cheaper then maybe you can get that instead of mac all right and also depends on the project delivery requirements and the type of material and content in the project let's say that um within your project you might 
require the use of a Macintosh um, hardware, then of course you might need to use that. So depending on um, the needs of your project, you can always select your own platform. All right. But it has been said that most developers prefer to work on Macintosh instead of Windows because they believe that it is a lot smoother and easier. I don't know about this, but maybe I can see um, the truth to that. But you know, there are um, Windows platform um, that is a, that is quite fast as well. It all depends on the hardware that you purchased. So the higher the RAM, the higher the um, um, what's it called? Um, the uh, main memory, okay, which is your RAM, okay, um, the. Um, the more uh, processor that you have, okay? So all of these will sort of um, uh, reflect on um, how fast your um, project can run on that particular platform, all right? Um, yeah, so whenever your project uh, is finished, okay, you need to always test and port it across different platforms so that you are able to satisfy your requirements of being it cross-platform. So if you specify that your project can be run on Windows and it can be run on Mac, so you need to make sure that your project can run on those um, platforms, all right? Okay, so now let's talk about uh, the Windows platform, how they come about, all right? So Windows platform is built by a company called Microsoft, all right? Microsoft is primarily a software company, meaning that in the beginning, that's what this company um, provides to their customers, all right? So if you notice that a Windows computer are made up of different vendor neutral hardware that are tied together by the requirements of the Windows operating system. So if you look at any um, Windows, uh, any computer that runs runs on Windows, okay, you notice that each of the hardware that um, is tied together on your workstation, it doesn't have to be from the same vendors, meaning that your monitor doesn't have to be um, made from Dell. You know, let's say your monitor is from Dell, so every single hardware that is on your workstation must be from Dell. No, because Windows OS is able to run any hardware that is made up that is made from different vendors, such as you have HP, you have Sony. So for example, you can create your own clone of your Windows computer. Okay, maybe you can create um, your own workstation by taking um, a monitor from Dell and then you have um, a keyboard from HP, you have monitor from not monitor, you have mouse from Sony, okay? You have speaker from Sony, okay? So all these different brands can be tied together using a Windows OS because Windows OS can um, can run on those um, hardwares, okay? okay? So um, this is a complete opposite to a Mac OS because a Mac OS is um, created specifically for their own hardware, okay? Meaning that in order for um, the... Um, Apple, the let's say you use a MacBook, okay. In order for you to run your MacBook, you need a Mac OS because those hardware are made specifically for that platform, okay. So Macintosh platform is uh, created or is developed by Apple. So Apple is primarily a hardware manufacturing company, meaning that this company creates their own hardware. So in order for them to run the hardware, they create their own. OS for that as well, okay? So they develop their own operating system called Macintosh OS to run their hardware, all right? But in 2006, Apple adopted Intel's processor architecture, allowing the hardware to run on any x86 OS, such as Windows using Bootcamp or parallel software. You know, uh, what this means is that, um, let's say you have a MacBook, meaning that you have a hardware from Apple, okay? So you want to run Windows, you can actually do that, but you need um, another thing, um, another um, software or um, parallel software such as bootcamp, etc., in order to run your, um, in order to run operating system other than Macintosh OS. Okay. Now, what is the purpose of networking? Okay. As we all know, when we talk about networking, we are connecting two or more computer systems by linking them together using a network. So a network is when we link something together. So in this case, what are we linking? We are linking computers, okay? So 
if the computer is standalone, it is not a network. So if you want this computer to communicate with this computer, then we need some sort of a network to connect them together, link them, then it becomes a network, okay? So once the computers are inside a particular network, you're able to um, allow communication and sharing of resources across those platform, okay? So um, when we have network, there are two um, main type of network that people usually use, which are LAN and also WAN. LAN stands for a local area network, whereas WAN stands for a wide area network. So we'll go into this. Okay. A local area network, okay, also known as LAN, it will connect computers that are close to each other, meaning short distance. So um, the difference between LAN and WAN, LAN is when the um, network is um, created in a small space. Okay, So the network is created within a short distance, whereas WAN, it is created over a long distance. Okay, So um, for example, you have a workstation that are on the same floor of a building let's say you are in an office okay and you have all these computers okay let's say uh, within that particular office you have all these computers and all these computers want to use one printer so in order for all of those computers to share that one printer it needs a LAN okay so this LAN which is this network is able to um, allow all these computers to connect and um, link together in order to share resources in order to use that printer okay so uh, this network is confined in a sh in a short space in a in a small space or short distance it's known as a LAN okay and of course LAN is a lot less expensive than when to build all right so when you want to create um, a LAN okay so these are technology that can be used you can use an ethernet ethernet is when you use a network cable to link those computers together okay so when we have a network of course we need a client a server software to allow them to um, communicate and pass the messages back and forth to each other okay so some computers will act as the client and you have one server to um, pass this information around all right um, Wi-Fi is another connection okay Wi-Fi is a wireless distribution method using radio instead of you using actual wires to connect those computers together you can use Wi-Fi okay so Wi-Fi uses radio technology so it, um, users are able to move around while they share those information with each other all right so next thing we have is of course a WAN a WAN is a wide area network meaning that um, it is able to connect computers over a long distance okay so let's say you are in malaysia and you have a friend in um uk so you can send messages or send emails to each other um through a wan so an internet is one example of a wan okay so um a wan allow users to communicate with each other at any location so you are not restricted to one particular place so you can um connect to one another over a long distance through WAN, okay? So in order for you to um, have WAN, okay, you need an internet service provider, ISP. So ISP, for example, you have Maxis, you have TM, you have Cellcom. So these are the providers that um, provide um, internet to users that wants to communicate to different computers worldwide, okay? Okay, so now let's talk about connections. So when we have hardware um, and we connect them together um, within our computer system, okay, you have those different separate equipments, right? You have things like keyboard, you have RAM, you have um, mouse. So in order for you to connect those hardware together, you need some sort of a connection, okay? So the connection that can be used um, comes down to these. So you have SCSI, you have IDE, you have USB, you have Firewire. So depending on what hardware that you use, so there are different connect type of connections that can be used, all right? So let's go into SCSI. So SCSI stands for Small Computer System Interface. So it is used to connect internal and external peripheral devices that conform to the SCSI standard. So let's say you have a, um, a hard disk. So in order for you to um, connect your hard disk to your motherboard, you might need to use a SCSI. 
okay so the SCSI looks like that okay as you can see on the screen here all right um, also um, some um, other hardware such as scanners do use SCSI as well to connect the scanner um, onto your computer but SCSI is actually an old technology so people don't really use that nowadays okay because after SCSI comes IDE okay IDE is also known as Integrated Drive Electronics is also known as an ATA, which is Advanced Technology Attachment. Okay, so um, if you take a look at the connection here, it is pretty similar to SCSI. Okay, but um, it is a lot expensive. Okay, um, with um, ATA or IDE here, okay, it is um, used for mounting hardware inside the computer. So things like hard drives, you have CD-ROM drive. Okay, so if you want to correct, uh, connect to a hardware. I mean your uh, CD-ROM drive or your hard drive to your motherboard, you can use this connection. Okay, so this is a lot less expensive than SCSI. But after ATA or IDE comes SATA. SATA is also known as a serial ATA. Okay, if you take a look at the timeline here, SCSI was launched in the 1970s, then comes IDE, then comes SATA. So just from the look of it, you know that SATA is a lot smaller. Okay, it has better technology so SATA has definitely um, replaced SCSI and IDE in terms of connections okay because with SATA it offers hot swapping meaning that computer components can be replaced without having to shut down the system okay meaning that um, let's say you want to connect to hard drive with your computer okay you can just use a serial ATA connection meaning that when you install that um, that particular uh, um, hard drive okay um, you don't have to shut down the computer in order for it to um, install you need know, in order for it for the um, for the computer to be connected to that hardware okay so um, SATA has nine pin is typically about a meter in length which makes it easier for SATA cables to fit in small devices and offer better air cooling and it is least expensive out of the three so that's why it is the least expensive and it's a lot smaller so it has definitely replaced IDE and SCSI in terms of internal connections okay so then um, this connection is what you are not usually um, used to seeing which is USB so USB stands for universal serial bus it is a standard for connecting devices to the computer using the plug and play system meaning that um, when we have plug and play okay all we need to do is just take that particular device and just plug it into your computer and suddenly it can automatically be used okay plug it can automatically be played all right so meaning that you don't have to turn off the computer and then turn it back on again in order for the computer to be to be recognizing the hardware all right so the device is connected will be automatically recognized due to plug and play okay so you don't need to install anything you don't need to turn the computer on and off so this also allow for hot swapping meaning that we don't have to turn off the computer in order to make the connection okay so when it comes to usb um, it uses single cable okay meaning that let's say you have um, a single usb and you connect it to your computer but your computer usb port at your computer this there were there are only few of them on your computer if you notice like you have two you have three sometimes even one okay so in order for you to use a lot of devices okay you might need to use a hub okay a hub allows your um, devices to be daisy chained daisy chain meaning that one particular usb hub can connect up to 127 usb peripherals to a single computer so let's say you have one hub so that hub has four part okay so you can connect these with other hubs and it can be um, it can detect up to 127 usb if you want but there's no need to do that right okay all right so after that we have firewire so um firewire is another connection that you can use it has been said that um uh, firewire uh, allows for high bandwidth serial data transfer meaning that if you have videos you have cameras that you want the file to be transferred faster you can use a firewire okay but um USB nowadays okay, has different versions. You have USB 2.0, you have USB 3.0. So now USBs um, are the uh, it connections that 
everyone is using so um, you can use a firewire um, to uh, transfer the files but in some computers just usbs is enough okay again firewire support hot swapping and plug and play right okay so let's talk about the um, memory and storage devices so when we work with um, when we are trying to develop a multimedia project it is important for us to allocate enough memory for our project to run on okay so if you um, if you want to work on a specific platform and you want your computer to be really fast so there are certain things that you can do all right so we need to look at these two types of memories which are ram and rom because these two things allow us to process whatever it is that we want to do okay so i'll go into details of how ram and rom works inside your computer okay okay so before i go into what exactly is a ram and what is a rom all right so just know that inside your computer okay you have a motherboard so on that motherboard you have these different components that makes up your computer all right so um i'll just talk about the really the main one that you need inside your computer okay so first of all of course you would need a cpu okay so a cpu will allow your computer to process um, whatever data that you have again okay, how your computer will run so it will be handled by the CPU because CPU is like the brain of the computer all right so um, inside your um, computer as well you also need a RAM okay so a RAM stands for random access memory okay so a RAM enables you to run multiple applications simultaneously so let's say your computer um, is slow okay and how you and and what you can do to improve that is you can actually increase your ram okay why why do we need to increase our ram okay i will explain that now all right so other than cpu and ram you also need a rom okay rom stands for read only memory okay there is a big difference between a ram and a rom okay a ram is volatile and rom is non-volatile okay so volatile means that once a computer is turned off all of the stored information will be lost whereas um, a rom it is non-volatile so it means that whatever information that you store inside there will not be lost even if the um, computer shuts down okay so um before we go again before i go into this so i'll explain more in details about what we need here okay so you have cpu you have ram you have rom and you also might need to have a hot disk okay so um a disk drive a hot disk whatever and call that all right so nowadays you, you can even have an ssd instead of a hot disk okay so hdd or ssd okay so um now um how it works is that all right so how your um computer works so let's say you turn on your computer okay so your computer right now is turned off so when you turn on the computer okay what does your computer do okay first of all your computer will need to boot up okay so when it boots up okay um, it will um, basically a ROM will do its work okay because inside ROM it contains a thing called a BIOS program okay inside ROM you will have a BIOS program so this BIOS program allows a computer to boot up okay it allows a computer to start up okay so before it can access the operating system it needs to be able to boot up the computer first so this is what rom will do it will store the bios program this is why rom is non-volatile because you cannot lose the bios program because otherwise your computer cannot be boot up all right so once you turn on a computer the bios will work okay then it will call upon the operating system so where is the operating system located the operating system located inside your hard disk so whatever software whatever data that you store you want to store permanently it is stored inside your hard disk okay so your os will be stored inside here okay so anything that is permanent okay anything that is per net will be stored inside your hard disk okay or your ssd wherever you install it all right so 
This OS allows you to use other software that is inside your computer, all right? So in order for this to work, it needs to be able to run on your RAM. So RAM is actually, um, it allows your um, computer to um, um, basically process things, okay? So imagine it's like your hands. Okay, RAM is like your hands. In order for you to work, it needs to be on your hands so that you can work on it, right? So uh, where you store it is you store it in a place called a hard disk. Okay, so whenever you want the OS to work, to process, to be executed, it needs to be stored inside your RAM. Okay, so right now inside my RAM is my OS. Okay, so the OS will work and then you can now run other applications. Okay, so once it has um, uh, the OS has run, okay, and you can you, you suddenly see you see um, all this different software that is on your computer, okay. So right now, let's say I want to open up Microsoft Word, okay. So where is Microsoft Word installed? Again, it is installed inside your hard disk. So your Microsoft Word is installed here. So in order for you, let's say you double click on that program, again you want to run your Microsoft Word, it will be brought to your RAM as well. So you will have your Microsoft Word stored inside your RAM. So whatever that is currently running, okay, will be run on your RAM, okay? That's why the higher the RAM, the faster um, your computer will be because it can run multiple applications simultaneously. Okay, RAM is used to do that, okay? So the higher the RAM, the more application that can be run simultaneously at, at one time, all right? so. Let's say suddenly you want to open up Photoshop, okay? So Photoshop is stored in hard disk, so then right now you put it inside your RAM, okay? So if you see here, my RAM is kind of full, all right? So let's say I want to open up um, After Effects, okay? So this really, there's no more room to be placed inside here, all right? So if you still put it inside here, your computer might slow down or it can crash. Right, so you might need to close off some of the software in order for your RAM to be freed. Okay, so that's why whenever you open up your computer, okay, the um, the RAM will be empty. Okay, that is when if if you notice that the first moment that you open up your computer, it will be the fastest. Why? Because your RAM is free. Okay, so when you open up all these different applications, your RAM will now be full. That's why your computer becomes slow. So if you want to increase the speed of the computer, you might need to increase your RAM. Okay, now why this RAM has been set to be volatile? Because when your computer is turned off, all of these applications that is running right now will be lost. Why? Because it is volatile. All right, so let's say, let's say I'm writing a report inside my Microsoft Word and then suddenly my computer turns off because I forgot to charge it, okay? When you open it up, your document will be lost because you forgot to save it, all right? So when you click on save as, all right, what you're doing is you are saving it permanently. So when you save it permanently, you're able to select where you want to save it, right? Okay, inside a folder or whatever. So this will be stored inside your hard disk. So your hard disk will be will store files permanently. So we know that RAM is volatile. So whatever that is currently running, okay, wherever you're executing right now and you're not saving it, okay, if the computer is turned off, all of the information will be lost. It means that the data that is stored here is only temporary. Okay, whereas ROM, okay, it is non-volatile. Why? Because you want the file that is inside here to be stored forever, okay? It is a small um, um, memory, okay? So it only needs to um, basically um, store important software such as BIOS to allow us to open up and boot up the computer, okay? And it might, need, and, and it might include other software that is needed by the computer that cannot be lost, all right? Okay, so that's the difference between RAM and also ROM. All right, so the next um, um, type of memory we have is hard disk, okay? Hard disk is a permanent storage, okay? Meaning that um, whatever that you store in there will be permanently um, stored unless you delete them, okay? So hard disk is also called a disk drive. It is a non-removable mass storage device. So inside your computer, you will find that you will have a hard disk to store all of your files, okay? You can also have an external hard disk if you want, if your internal hard disk is not enough, okay? So hard disk has a high data storage capacity and data transfer speed, so you can store a lot of data inside there 
pretty quickly okay so um, nowadays um, com now today's computers typically come with a hard disk that contains gigabytes of storage so inside your computer you may find that your computer contains like I don't know at least 500 gigs of data all right so the more expensive your computer then maybe um, your hard disk can be up to one terabyte okay so the next type of memory we have is flash memory or thumb drive so this is the most convenient memory that we have meaning that um, this type of memory can be um, brought everywhere so if you want to um, pass your file to your friends you can just use a flash memory or thumb drive to do that because it is small it is a small storage device so you have that memory the chip inside that casing okay then in order to connect that memory to your computer you will have a usb connection that either usb or firewire okay but usually you will find a usb connection okay so this um um not how this this thumb drive or this flash memory okay can store up to several gigs of data and it is of course extremely portable and a lot more reliable can you can just bring it everywhere put it in your pocket it's very easy to bring okay it's convenient and also it is usable and trendy you can find many types of usb designs out there not usb your flash memory flash me flash memory or thumb drive designs the casings you have koala you have like um cat you have like very small ones you have very big ones so depending on what you prefer the design of your thumb drive can also be um, customized all right so the next type of memory that we have here is a cd-rom disk okay a cd-rom disk stands for compact disk read only memory so um let's say you want to give your project to your um you know transfer your project or give your project to your supervisors or your lecturers or your teachers okay you don't really want to give them your um your thumb drive right because that's pretty expensive because with cds you can just buy them for pretty cheap okay so you put your files in there you can just burn it and you give it to the person that needs it okay so we cd-rom okay um uh, you can store up to 700 megabytes of data Okay, so when you have CDs, make sure that if you want to put your files in there, you need to burn it. So you need to have a CD burner. Okay, so there are two types of CD uh, ROM disk. Okay, you have a CDR and CDRW. CDR is CD recordable, meaning that if you buy a CDR, the files that you burn inside that disk can only be burned or written only once. Okay, so if you want to replace the file inside your disk, then you need to chuck that away and get a new one because you can only write on that CD once, okay? But if you want to rewrite over and over again, so do use a CDRW, which stands for CD Read and Write. So this can be rewritten about a thousand times, okay? So then we have DVDs, okay? Uh, the difference the CDs and DVDs. DVDs is able to store a lot more data. It can hold up to 4.7 gigs of data. So if you find that your files or let's say you have a video that you need to burn, okay, and it is around 3.8 megabyte, so of course a CD-ROM cannot handle that, so you use a DVD, okay? So um, with DVD, there are three types. You have DVD-ROM, DVD-RW, and DVD-Video, so depending on what you need, so there are those different types of DVDs that you can use, okay? So the next um, type of memory we have is a Blu-ray disc. So Blu-ray disc is usually used by the motion picture industry. So uh, with Blu-ray, um, you can store a lot more data inside there because usually with Blu-ray Blu disc, the video that is contained inside there is high definition videos. Okay, so it's a lot more clearer. It, it can hold a lot more data as well okay so let's move on to input devices okay as we all know input is any data instructions that are entered into the memory of a computer so any data that we place inside the computer and is processed by the computer is stored inside the memory it is known as an input so this input comes from the user okay so there are four types of input which are text graphics audio and video so in order for us to place these data, these types of input inside our computer, we need an input device. 
Okay, so an input device are used to send data to a computer, allowing you to interact with and control the computer. Okay, so for example, let's say we want to put in text into our computer. So how do we do that? How do I put in my name inside the computer? Maybe we can use a keyboard. So a keyboard contains keys that users can press to enter data into a computer. Okay, so we also have a barcode reader. So a barcode reader uses a laser beam to read barcodes. So it has a barcode and then you take your barcode reader and then you just scan that so that is when we scan that barcode then it will um, um, convert this data into textual data meaning that you can have the price you can have the name of the product okay so all of these are text okay so it uses OCR which stands for optical character recognition to convert printed matter into ASCII text files so as we all know the barcode is printed, meaning it's in terms of graphics. Okay, so when we scan it, so we will get that text data from that particular barcode. All right. Okay, so the next type of um, input devices, input devices for graphics. So how do we put pictures um, inside our computer? Of course, we can use a digital camera. Okay, so inside our digital camera, we have a CCD, which stands for charge coupled device. So the CCD will help us to capture um, the image by transforming the light that we see into pixels okay if you remember that from our previous chapter all right so the next input device we have a scanner so if you have a picture that you want to place inside your computer okay you can always scan that using a scanner okay so it will capture that image and place that inside our computer all right so also if you have a document let's say you have a book that you want to scan so if you scan that book okay it uses optical character recognition to do that okay so if you use an optical character recognition software okay it can actually scan through the text on that image and you can also edit the text if you want okay without retyping the whole thing all right so that is the purpose of having an optical character recognition software all right, so the next type of input device we have is input devices for audio. So if you want to put audio inside our computer, okay, when we speak, of course, we need a microphone, okay? A microphone is used to record audio or give commands to the computer, okay? Certain software allow um, the computer to listen to what we say. So, of course, we need a microphone to do that, right? So, um, yeah, so we can use a voice recognition system in order for us to give commands to the computer using our audio, all right? Um, we also have MIDI keyboard, okay? So if you want to record whatever that you press, a particular song that you want to record, you can use a MIDI keyboard or any MIDI um, uh, musical instruments that you may have, okay? So when you have a MIDI instrument, you can record the... Uh, musical instructions okay in terms of a MIDI audio all right next we have is input devices for video okay so if you want to record a video and put that inside your computer we can always use a digital video camera so this allows us to record full motion video and store the video digitally all right so we have a digital camera and you also have CCTVs okay you also have a webcam so all of the all of these things are able to record instead of capturing a single picture it is able to record your video okay and then um, we have input devices for pointing okay so other than pictures text um, audio video we can also give instructions to the computer so when we point certain things on the monitor we want to click on it right okay so we can use things like mouse okay so uh, you can use things like a pointing stick so, okay you can find a pointing stick on um, a keyboard okay so it's that red ball where you can just like move it all right you can also use a touchpad so any laptop nowadays we have a touchpad so you just move your finger across there okay you have a joystick so a joystick allows us to control the movement okay of your characters when you play games and things like that okay a trackball so a trackball is like um a mouse an old version of a mouse i don't know if you've seen this but an old a version of a mouse they have like a ball underneath okay so imagine if you 
uh, rotate that and then you flip it okay and you have that ball right at the top you can move that across okay that is called a track ball okay and you also have a game pad okay a game pad has all these different buttons that you can control for pointing okay and lastly we have is output devices so output is what we project or we portray or we, we display to the user okay so output devices are used to display or output data which has been processed or has been stored on the computer let's say anything that you want to display to the user in terms of pictures in terms of videos anything that you want to give or you want to portray to the user as well in terms of audio okay you can use an output device so if you want to give out things that we hear of course we use a speaker okay so for example a stereo speaker can be used for better quality audio so monitors so monitors is used to display things okay in terms of text video image blah 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 okay so um on a workstation you can even have multiple monitors okay by adding them onto to onto your workstation okay so this makes your job a lot easier without you having to minimize and maximize different software at the same time right um, also, we have projectors. Okay, projectors are used when you have a larger audience that cannot be accommodated around a computer monitor. Let's say I'm teaching, okay, in a class. I don't want to be using a monitor because a monitor is small. So instead of using a monitor to display whatever I want to show you, I use a projector, which is a lot bigger. It is able to display a bigger picture. Okay, and lastly, we also have a printer. A printer is also an output device because it gives a hard copy printed output to your user so wherever that you want to get a hard copy of something okay you can use a printer for that right and that is the end of this chapter so i'll see you in our next chapter bye class